Hello again, it's Robin, Zone 6, Northwest Connecticut. I think it's starting to rain. Oh gosh. I wanted to talk this week about underplanting, layering. Uh, I watched a great webinar by Fergus Garrett of her Great Dexter. Love Great Dexter. I, I'd love to go there. Um, and he talked a lot about underplanting. So at this time of the year, where we can actually see where we have open spaces, we can figure out like what can we put in there, whether it's muscari, the little tet -a -tet daffodils. Now I planted a lot of extra daffodils this, this season, um, mostly because the voles won't eat them and stuff. But so this is something that we wanna talk about, layer and layer and layer. So not only do we want winter interest, obviously we wanna have interest all four seasons. So, um, you know, in the very early spring, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of color. There's not, you know, we still have all the winter interest, which is awesome. Um, but that's quickly going to get, you know, covered up and, you know, the things are going to leaf out. We're not going to see it anymore and stuff. So that's something to think about. So I'm going to go bed by bed and try to figure out where can I add some things. When you layer and you get those layers in, you don't have extra work because it's all done for you now. It's going to come back season after season after season. Just remember your zone. Also, like I said, I put in a lot of daffodils. So if you're going to leave your, da well, I always leave daffodils in the ground because they, they multiply and, you know, there's no reason to take them out. But do not cut the foliage. Don't twist them up or whatever. you got to let the foliage die naturally. So plant them where you have plants that are going to hide the dying foliage, like uh, catmint, nepeta. Um, you, same thing, if you leave your tulips in the ground, um, don't cut them. That's the energy for the bulb, but you definitely want to take the flower stalk off. So a couple of the things that Fergus mentioned, and I actually have my notes from that webinar. It's great to write things down. Write things down so you don't forget. Um, you know, he his comment was, you know, put in things that will last you season after season after season. Maybe it's snowdrops under hostas. Maybe it's, you know, little daffodils under your spireas. I have a ton of spireas. Um, under the smoke bush, maybe. Hellebores last for a really long time. And don't forget about different shapes. So if one is a nice broad leaf that's going to open up, do something that's, a, you know, a ferny type of leaf. Um, so let's see, what else did he say? Um, so if you think about the foliage, you don't have to worry about the flowers because you'll have a lot of nice interest um, all along. I have Regersia, um in a couple of places. Doesn't come up till, you know, pretty late. That's a great spot to stick some stuff. Um, put in your alliums among the nepeta. Now that's something I have done. I have all the glo uh, allium globe masters. And as that foliage is dying, it's kind of ugly, let's face it. So I have it surrounded with catmint and with daylilies. So that hides it. Another um, suggestion that he had was, again, note the spaces in the spring borders. And um, you might also consider like um, perennial geraniums or plants that self-sow. So there are a lot of annuals that self-sow, um, and that might be something that you can, can consider. So let's uh, take a walk around, and I'll show you where I'm thinking of underplanting. I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet, um, but as I figure it out, I'll let you know. <laughs> so I uh, hope you uh, enjoy this little in introduction. Like I said, I love Great Dixter. I love that long border. Um, you know, I'm a big uh, proponent of Christopher Lloyd's method of um, gardening. So I hope you find this interesting. And I'll see you uh, on the other side. Obviously, in this bed, nothing is up yet, pretty much. We have hostas, so we have a lot of room here to put some underplanting. I just put in a bunch of hellebores, um, but the heucheras, you know, are still very small. Solomon seal hasn't come up yet. I definitely am going to get rid of that pachysandra. I have some room back here where the loose strife isn't up yet. Uh, it'd be nice to put in something that competes with it because uh, it just keeps taking over. We keep pulling it out. So beware what you put in your garden if you don't want to see it, if, it's a, if you know it's a spreader. Um, so I have a lot of space in this garden. 
So I thought I'd try to stop at the end of each segment, um, at each bed, and explain what I think I'm going to do. So in this bed, I have a really big uh, hosta crosa regal. I have some other small hostas. I have a bunch of heucheras, uh, wild berry, um, which you see here. I have palace purple. I'm going to add some crocus tricolors in the bottom left there, and another crocus called Tommy's. Um, I have a big service berry here. Um, I have some stilbees. I have clethora, uh, hakanakloa, um, some Solomon seal, some gooseneck loose strife, and I'm going to add a clematis to climb up that uh, service berry. So this is what I'm thinking of adding, uh, and I can see this from my basement, so it's a good spot to add things. Now this is an area of my garden I have always had a problem with between the chipmunks that seem to go back and forth here. They obviously live in the woods over here. Um, but I've always had an issue here, but you can see under the Barbary, under the Pinky Winky, I have a lot of space there that I could do something with. So that's a spot I wanna consider. So if you remember, uh, I pulled out all my orange daylilies from here and I put in uh, coneflowers, drops of Jupiter, some Russian sage. I've got a rose. I'm not sure if the rose actually survived. Got a bunch of alliums in there. I've got some helenium. I've got a nice big uh, Raiden's favorite aster. Uh, those ilex don't look too good. Um, and then that's backed by the big... Um, Helianthus, um, Herbstone, Rebecca. So you can see, again, I have lots of open space here that I could do something early in the season. And when we flip around to this bed, this bed is already pretty crowded. I don't think I would do too much. You know, I do have some space uh, behind the uh, Amsonia and the Baptisia there, but... Uh, water is a bit of an issue in this bed, so I don't think I would do that here. Now, I do have space uh, around this viburnum, Mariesi, um, which will start blooming pretty soon. But again, it's a nice open spot that I could get some either ground cover or just some spring flowers. I don't think I would do it underneath the, the hedge of viburnums, though, but I could do it underneath these pinky winkies. But uh, yeah, you know, some underplanting here I think would be, would be a good thing also along this edge. Now we are thinking about, this is a very wet area in my yard. So we're thinking about trying to do something right here, maybe get in um, some river birch, some uh, dogwoods, something to try to absorb some of the water. We can't put in like a weeping willow because our septic system, our septic field is right here. So this new bed that I did, if you'll remember last year, if you've been following me, this whole bed is new. And I definitely have room around the catmint, around the daylilies, the hydrangeas. I started filling in a little bit here. But again, I have lots of room that I can pop in either some ground covers. Now, I did order some geranium, uh, and I think those I might put back here. So we'll see. So this bed has a big pine tree, a paper bark maple, a rose of Sharon, some cryptomerias, elderberry, lots of catmint. Um, and a catinus that I put in there, a bunch of daylilies. So in here, I'm gonna add some drops of Jupiter that's down on the bottom right there. I have some crocus uh, tommies. Again, I'm gonna use that here. Over on the left there at the bottom left is geranium biacovo, and right above it is the um, chorus ogon. And then on the top left is geranium bevins variety. Um, those geraniums are all hardy geraniums. So I think they'll be great, they'll spread. I have some geranium roseanne uh, in and around this bed, and I think that'll be a good uh, ground cover in here. And uh, I also have some globe thistle and uh, a few other things. Here's another area. These Coringa shomas don't come up real early, so there's lots of room there. There's lots of room around these macrophylla hydrangeas. Uh, this Aruncus 
gets very large. Um, but I do have some room underneath the pussy willow right here. I have a very, very big hosta in there. But again, I have room there in front of the nine barks. I have some room. Uh, I have a lot of vol damage in this bed. I've been trying to add like more, more hookahs and things like that. I don't know if that's gonna work. I just tried to clean this out a little bit yesterday. I've got a nice rejersia back there. So we'll see. Bleeding heart. I'm not sure I see my new bleeding heart, which was right there. I put in a white one last year. Don't think I see it though. Uh, fingers crossed that I didn't lose it. You know, you never know. You never know. Uh, same thing in this area. Very large hosta here. One there, one there. I put in a seven sun tree right there. But again, right around the Dawn Redwood, I could definitely do something in that area. So I think what I'm going to do over here, I have two very big Regal Splendors hostas and another Cosa Regal uh, hosta over here. I'm going to add some crocus uh, called Pickwick, uh, bottom left there, and crocus Hocus Crocus <laughs> over on the right. And then I'm going to add also some snowdrops, Galanthus, um, underneath my Dawn Redwood and underneath these hostas. I mean, underneath that Seven Sun, uh, just to fill in because this area is very open. But again, I have a lot of old damage. Uh, I'm not sure the snowdrops will last. I think they'll be okay. I know some things like the uh, Snake's Head Fritillari are not uh, vol resistant. So, um, I'm only trying those in one specific area. So I'm hoping crocus will be okay. And just a reminder, choose the right plants for your zone. Always check the zone and know what your soil condition is. Um, and again, the whole point of under planting with bulbs before your perennials fill in the space is you get an extra seasons without a lot of extra work because these things, for the most part, um, we'll come back year after year after year, you know, do it once and forget it. Let's walk, keep walking down. Now in this bed, I have a lot of spring because I have all the allium globe masters in this bed. So I wouldn't add anything in there. This bed, I've been trying to, um, this was an, again, another brand new bed. Uh, I have some room to add some things in here, but I really want to see what survived the winter first. And let's go over here. So this bed, I've got Euphorbia that keeps uh, spreading itself around. I've got a Rogersia there. I've got Hosta. I've got some Alliums. I've got a Forsythia that I added. I hope it grows this year. It didn't really put on any growth last year at all. Got a bunch of gold mound Spireas. More Hosta. But again, I do have room in this bed to add some ground covers. Uh, this bed has not been cleaned up at all. As you can see, I've been trying to get to the beds where I've got spring flowers like azaleas and, and that kind of stuff that are going to bloom early. But, you know, time is sometimes our enemy and I chose to go away. So <laughs> now, you know, you're paying the price. But I've got some nice space. Again, this is an area in my garden where for some reason I don't know what it is but uh, it, it plants seem to get eaten right there and the day lilies seem to be fine I don't have an issue with deer thank god not gum wood um a still be those are great so I might add a little bit over here so let's walk back down through here and again, you know, I mean, I do have some spaces where I can add add in a couple of things. I still haven't uncovered that Eustacea Vi from last year uh, that I did as a bare root rose. Uh, one area I have thought about doing something is underneath this particular hawthorn because I have a nice area here. Um, it gets some nice, you know, early morning sun uh, most of the year, but before this is completely, the hawthorn's completely leafed out. I do have a nice area here. I think what I'd like to add underneath this hawthorn is uh, I have an epimedium, that top left called domino. 
On the right uh, top, I have a heuchera called Frosted Berry that I'm going to order. The bottom left, I have uh, some hellebores called Royal Heritage Strain. And the bottom right, Epimedium Pink Elf. So I'm going to add those underneath here. I think that'll be a really nice contrast. The hawthorn gets really beautiful white flowers in the spring. Beautiful leaves, um, leaves during the year. Gorgeous color in the fall and berries. Um, but I think this will be a really nice spring touch before the canopy closes in. I have, I made the very bad mistake, I'd have to say. I put in Vinca all along here as a, to try and control the water, which it does, but it also gets totally infested with grass. Ah, oh, you hate that. And like, it's impossible to pull it out. You know, yeah, it's pretty with, you know, the purple flowers on it now, you know. You can see there's purple flowers and stuff, but it's it's a pain in the neck. Um, let's see, I've got got a little area and that retaining wall that I could do something. Um, just another quick shot of the tulips. That's Akibono. And I know I showed you these the other day, but they're so beautiful. <laughs> and this is Purple Prince, Candy Prince, and Flaming Prince, I think. Thank you, Klaus Dalby, for those that suggestion. Uh, so I have room, again, I have room underneath this nine bark. I did get that one opened up a little bit. Not the others. <laughs> So underneath the nine barks, I'm really going for some uh, different uh, colors and textures and leaf forms. So I have um, already have some heucheras under there and some wee white hydrangeas. I also have uh, some nepeta and euphorbia underneath there. So I'm going to add a crocus tricolor at the top right there, the multicolored crocus. Bottom left is this snowflake uh, leucogen. And then in the middle on the bottom, Daffodil Tet a Tet. And right above it in the middle there is Winter Wolfsbane. I think that'll look really nice underneath the nine barks before they uh, start blooming in the spring. Uh, this bed here is pretty full. Um, between daylilies, it looks like I need to do some cleanup on that spirea. The lilacs, I've got alliums in here. Um, this is Persicaria Burn Burnett. Uh, there's a lot in this bed. I don't think I would do much. I usually save the area right along the front to pop some annuals like Supertunia, Mini Vista White, I think is what I did last year. Penstemum in here um, kind of self seeds itself around. So I don't know that I would need to do anything there. In the front here, I do have room under the river birches. Uh, would I do something there? It would have to be something that can handle water in the springtime because this whole area gets incredibly wet. The whole area around the front here, the water comes down the hill from my uh, neighbors and we live, you know, on the lower end of a mountain. Um, so it gets very wet. This area, that hibiscus, won't leaf out for weeks yet, weeks, so I definitely have room there. I did try to plant some stuff there last year. I think the rabbits ate it. What I do think I'm going to add in here is a combination of annuals, perennials, and bulbs. So um, I'm going to add the little, um, I'm going to add a, a mum called October Glory on the top left there, uh, that pretty little pink. The top right is a sweet potato vine called uh, Sweet Carolyn uh, Bewitched After Midnight that I'm really looking forward to. Bottom left is a Stilby Dark Side of the Moon. I'm going to add some of those. Then I'm also going to add uh, some snowflake leucogems. So again, different shapes, different textures allow for spaces and shadows in the in in your beds. Um, maybe the snowdrops are going to come up through your ferns. Um, you know, have a fern come up through something like a rogerzia. Um, so just think think out of the box a little bit. And, um, you know, look for the different shapes, different textures, different colors. 
um, and add those different layers. And don't forget about winter interest. So not everything, of course, um, is going to bloom in the summertime. And most of these things are going to bloom in the spring and then they're going to be finished. But consider adding things also that have structure for the winter. Same thing right along here. Those two Amsonias get very big, which is why they have hoops around them. Um, but the problem, well, not the problem. Uh, yes, actually the problem is that I have rabbits that and stuff that also eat. And I have, this seems to be an area where I've had some vole damage. But one of the things that I do, again, this is an area I usually save for annuals. Playing the blues salvia, things like that. Rocking deep purple salvia. Uh, the bed in the front, yeah, I don't think I would do anything in this bed here. Um, I don't think I would do anything over here. I put in tulips, and I put, I usually always have annuals there, so I wouldn't. That's an area I always do tulips. This is Delna Shaw. This is so gorgeous, I swear I'm going to do more of these next year. I have a lot of variety right here for daffodils, um, but I'm definitely going to add more Delna Shaw. Let's see what's over here. Oh my goodness. Uh, yellow. What's in here? Akibono. Whoops. Akibono. And there's something else in here, if I can find the tag. Not sure what that is. Uh, oh, there it is, Mondial. Um, so there's that. I don't know what this is. I think these I planted last year. Um, these are really pretty, whatever, <laughs> whatever they are. I don't exactly remember. Um, I think some of my tulips managed to come back that the voles didn't find and eat. Um, Red twig dogwoods. Let's see if I can get the magnolia. Well, something did eat, uh, like the poppies that I had, and that's something you might think about um, doing things that are self sowers, some, you know, annuals and stuff. So, my yellow magnolia is called Sensation, and I am going to plant underneath it. I have a few different things that I um, have thought about. I have some winter berries around there, as well as the red twig dogwoods. I'm going to put, I have some uh, Nepeta Walker's Low, and you saw the Delna Shaw Daffodils that are there. I'm also going to add Eucara Silver Gumdrop. So that's in the bottom left there. The bottom right is a hyacinth called Purple Sensation, Sensation that I'm going to add. And I am going to try to add the Snake's Head Fritillaria. That's in the top right. Um, like I said, they're not vole resistant. I am going to try to add them here. I think it'll look really pretty underneath the yellow magnolia. I picked a yellow magnolia versus the whites, the stellatas, all, all the different magnolias because we're in a pretty cold zone and typically the yellow magnolias bloom later. Um, and unfortunately we're having a lot of rain and now that it's blooming, they're probably all going to drop. So I think those are the areas that I would consider putting stuff in. That bed over there, I save that for annuals, uh, for the seeds that I'm doing, uh, bells of Ireland, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see we had a lot of wash out the other day. My neighbors are having their driveway done and completely washed that bed out. <laughs> um, this bed is always full. The nepeta comes up really quickly. Then I have the daffodils, the fritillaria, got a lot of camassias. I do have, you know, open space here, but those grasses will fill in pretty quickly. Um, so I wouldn't do anything there. This gets only morning. This is shaded till later in the afternoon, this whole area. So I do have space here. I do have some daylilies here. Um, I wouldn't go crazy over here. And then... Uh, I have a bunch of Veronicastrum in here. Um, I don't think I would do anything right there either or under this river birch. You know, enough's enough. So lastly, back down to the other new bed that we we did. Um, 
uh, things are going pretty well in this bed. Uh, knock on wood. Uh, things are coming up pretty well. Things have transplanted really well. And uh, we'll see. I have a bunch of stuff in my greenhouse. I still have a lot of seeds. And I ordered a bunch. Of, oh, God, I ordered a bunch of things from Farmer Bailey also. Uh, so uh, I have plenty of stuff that I'm going to be popping in. So uh, let me know if you do a lot of that spring ephemeral kind of stuff. Um, and those plantings, do you do that? Um, like I said, I watched a um, webinar with, sorry, I'm out of breath, I'm walking around and the allergies are driving me nuts. Um, I watched a video or a webinar with Fergus Garrett from Great Dixter. I love that. I love him. I love Great Dixter. It's one of my dreams to go there. And I really was inspired by uh, I mean, I already aim for four season interest. Don't forget about winter interest. As I was just walking around, you can see there's still a lot of winter interest in the garden. This week looks like it's going to rain all week. So while I have one last minute because it's already starting to rain, I thought I'd show you the tulips that are blooming. I don't know how long they'll go. This is Sané and uh, Paul Scherer, which is not quite open, but but getting there. So that's that's one. Pinball Wizard Alliums getting ready to open. We've got over here, let's see, what do we have here? Triumph Negrita. Princess Irene is the most beautiful tulip. Um, it's, it's that peach and purple so I've mixed it with the Triumph Negrita. Can't wait to see that open. So this group is just getting ready to open and I think they kind of have varied colors. I'm not sure. Um, it's called, I can't really pronounce it, Goodishnik? Double? <laughs> not exactly sure. But I have a bunch of them. A bunch of them here. It's definitely starting to rain. And over here, have some more La Bella Pac and um, Menton in this in this one, but this is the only one that's open right now. We've got lots of Bella Estrella uh, daffodils over here next to the greenhouse. And over here I've got Sir Winston Churchill. Really beautiful. Um, little double. I love this one. This container has Blushing Lady and Copper Image in it. I've started to cut a few of these just because the weather is so bad. <sighs> um, I don't want them to just open and be gone now, all that work. This might be my favorite collection of tulips this year. I love this, love this container. And like I said, I think this is Candy Prince, Purple Prince, and Flaming Prince. And then on the front steps, these are not open yet. Balance of Colors. This was a lasagna planting right here. Um, then I've got Ivory Floridale and Everon. Over here I've got Yellow Madonna. This is a really pretty one. Um, nothing open here yet. Nothing open there yet. And then La Bella Pac. Sadly, this rain has just really wiped them out. But I will try. I'm actually going to try to leave these, and I'm definitely going to add more of these for next year. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. Please subscribe. Hit that like button. It really does make a difference. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.